Well, good morning, Bright Eyes. Hi, dear. Mm. What's all this picture book layout on the breakfast table? Are you expecting guests? Mm, I thought it might just start our day off brightly. What's uh, with the pajamas? Well, to be frank with you, I'm so hungry. I already got dot hair as soon as possible. Hey, pour me some scalding coffee, would you? Mm? I'm freezing. Mm -hmm. I've been halfway up the North Pole all night. North Pole? I could swear I saw you in your half of our identical twin beds last night. Oh, yes, in the flesh, maybe. But, hmm, good. But I was off on a dreamboat, away on a fishing trip. Like no fishing trip in this world. Hey, you've got a raggedy little piece of burned toast there? Mm, help yourself. Oh. How about a couple of uh, burned eggs? They go pretty well with burned toast. Ha uh ha, -huh, and a hoe. Where was I? Something about a dream. Uh... Oh, oh, no, a map. Oh. Well, in this dream, there was a big map painted. What's the matter with the cereal? There was a big map painted on the wall and a stepladder. What goes on, I said. And in walks Robbie, out of bed in his pajamas and carrying a can of paint and a brush. He showed us where we were going. Hold it. I'm lost already. It's pretty fuzzy, but I'll start over. We got in a plane. We dipped a silver wing over New York. We zoomed up to Toronto. We changed planes and landed at Windsor, across the river from Detroit. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Canada. Anything to declare? <laughs> I can't describe the map to you, dear. It was just a little crazy. Anyway, we arrived at Winnipeg. Robbie just uh, painted us right to the spot. There was nothing to it. The way he did it. And at Winnipeg, we changed planes again. It seems to me you went shopping and almost missed the flight. <laughs> I couldn't have been that lucky. Hmm. From Winnipeg, we flew north, way up into Manitoba. Lots of lakes and islands. Very fishy-looking country. I asked the stewardess to open a window and slow the plane down so I could troll for trout, and guess what she said? Mm, I know. No trolling permitted below 20,000 feet. Now, how did you know that? Mm, I fly a lot. We sat down at Lake Lynn, Manitoba, and there was a big old PBY waiting to pick us up, charter job. Only way we could get where we were going. Robbie painted us a red line northwest across Reindeer Lake and started down the ladder for bed. And we moved out of Lynn Lake full throttle. The pilot just seemed to head for a big trout. And that's how we got to Waterbury Lake. Obviously, you were reading the National Geographic in bed again. No, dear, that was a couple of nights ago. Well, anyway, our big tub sat down on some sky blue water. It was an eyeful. We got a mixed reception on the shoreline. I heard a duck complaining. Something like, let's clear out of here, girls. This place isn't big enough for that bird and us. And a grumpy old seagull gave us a cold, fishy eye. 
but the real gripe seemed to come from a black bear. A guy can't take a little nap after dinner around here without a lot of racket falling out of the sky. That sort of stuff. Going ashore reminded me just a little bit of Washington crossing the Delaware. A fellow named Jackson owned the place, quiet, friendly, and his wife helped run it. Funny thing about it, I could hear a public address horn in the background telling Jackson's story of how he came to the very top of Saskatchewan and found this little paradise in the wilderness. He flew over this country with a canoe lashed to a pontoon of the plane, and he liked what he saw. So down he came. He paddled all over the sparkling lakes and bobbed his way along the swift water rivers that tie the lakes together. He liked it more than ever when the fishing turned out to be better than fiction. Big fish, willing fish, and lots of them. And there were almost hidden passages between some of the lakes. Lakes fringed with lovely forests. And there was crisp climate, too. This was for him. I must have arrived in waders carrying a fly rod, because right off the bat, I was fishing for Arctic grayling in a beautiful stretch of fast water between two lakes. Well, let the dog out before he breaks down the door, will you? Yeah, just a second. Hey, here, boy, come on, easy there. Your paws are all muddy. Oh, he was born with muddy paws. By the way, what's an Arctic grayling? To tell you the truth, I don't know much about it. It's a cousin of the trout family and hangs around the Mackenzie River system, Alaska, around up there. I read about grayling, but never saw one alive before. But I caught a barrel full of them last night. Great scrappers. They took a dry fly every time I put one in the water. You know something? In this dream, I was 20 years younger. I wore an old red sweatshirt I used to own, and I had all my hair, blonde. Hmm, the boy I married. Hmm. I was a pretty good flycaster in this dream. Very relaxed. Had a small audience. You know how fishermen are always saying they want to be alone? But they really don't mind having a witness around when they're taking fish on every cast. I can still see those grayling. Purple gray and silver sides. A big dorsal fin like the sail on a toy boat. And ventral fins with necktie stripes. Oh, uh, speaking of neckties, uh, can Jimmy Brown wear your neckties for the senior prom tonight? I guess so. Tell him to take the knot out before he throws it back in my closet. Oh, that grayling fishing. I have all kinds of memories of that dream, if you can have memories about a dream. But it just got more and more hectic. Cast, float the fly, bang, fish in the net, show it off, lose one, take another one, hook out, land another one, a little nature study. And then I posed for Sports Illustrated, filled in stream, Sports of field and outdoor life. They were bidding against each other for my biography. Hmm. Oh, yes. There was a lady angler in this story, but not the kind that catches bigger and better fish than all the men. She actually made sounds like, um... Hello! Yeah, that's what I mean. Was I the lady? No. No, you turned into a rainbow as soon as we got there. Not a rainbow trout, a real rainbow. Mm, I get it. Something distant, dazzling, and uh, out of your way. I can see your subconscious mind working in this dream. What did you turn into? Well, they served up a baked ham. Oh. No remarks, please. And I turned into a glutton. The next morning, a crew of lumberjacks chopped our cabin down. Sounded like it anyway. And there was some bird under my pillow. 
Somebody dropped rocks in a box outside the window. It turned out to be beef and turkey and all kinds of good stuff going into the freezer. You should have seen the breakfast I dreamed up. Cooked it myself over a fire hot enough for, well, my old scoutmaster wouldn't have passed it for a merit badge. One minute I was drooling over breakfast and the next minute I was connected to a lake trout longer than my arm. The bear didn't like it. Hey, that's my fish. Maybe so, maybe so, <clears throat> but I had it. Come to think of it, it was as long as my leg. How long? Well, put it back, the bear said. Mm, I figured what did I have to lose. I went along with the bear. I put it back. Then it was time to eat again. You know, you know how you can do something in a dream you can't do when you're awake? Well, I knew how to fillet a trout. No kidding. I never did it in my life. I whacked it up into hunks the size of paperback books and sliced an onion over a whole frying pan full of it. Delicious. Mm, how about cooking dinner tonight? Wait, wait. I started to eat the trout and it turned to fried eggs. I bet the yolks were too runny. You already said that. Zing. Right after lunch, another lake trout. Nothing to it. I just threw a spoon out of the boat, and this big laker retrieved it. Oh, we didn't want to bring it right back, understand? I had to put a little pressure on it. Were you still wearing your red perspiration shirt? <laughs> Never took it off. Well, somebody cranked an outboard motor, and we hit the riffle into the next lake. This voice came at me from the trees. Say, Buster, have you ever been attacked by a school of Great Northern Pike? I couldn't remember, but I didn't want to sound chicken. So I shrugged like an old Marine sergeant. I said, plenty of times, boy, plenty of times. And right away, the pike attacked. I just threw them a spoon and hung on. The second one I tangled with grabbed a lure that looked like something a witch doctor made up to cure the heebie-jeebies. There seemed to be some company in the boat with me, and the hardware was flying wild and flashing in the water. My boatmate hooked one, and we had a brother act going. Then I posed for all those outdoor magazines again. They were watching my every move and telling me how to hold the fish, etc. I went along with it, of course, my usual modesty. Mm -hmm. Later on, I gave the photographers the slip and demonstrated a few secret techniques in the art of pike fishing. Naturally, I caught the biggest pike of the day. I played it for a while, emphasizing the proper use of the rod tip in wearing down a large game fish. Elementary stuff, you understand, dear? Nothing to it. Eventually, one of my students slipped a net under this monster, and I agreed modestly to pose with it. I remembered too late that there were no photographers present, and I thought how unfortunate that this pike will not be recorded for angling history. You were still a rainbow, dear. Mm, of course. Suddenly, everything became very peaceful. Before you could spell Saskatchewan backwards, a hush settled over the lake, and I broke into music. You had your trombone along with you? No, a guitar. Well, you can't play a guitar. <laughs> I know, but you should have heard me. Way up in Canada, 
day growing in a lake there's a trout they say that's too big to take it's bigger than my little boy is they say it's bigger than my little boy is don't you worry boy your daddy's going to hook it keep the fire crackling cause your mommy's going to cook it bigger than my little boy is they say it's bigger than my little When I'm back from Canada, dragging up trout, take it on your plate, boy, and eat it inside out. It's bigger than my little boy is, they say. It's bigger than my little boy is. And when you clean your plate, boy, and lie down on the floor. I'll put away my fishing rod for good and evermore. There'll be no trout bigger than my little boy is. No trout bigger than my little The odd thing was, the audience consisted of a bird, one oversized sandpiper with yellow legs. I thought it was pretty decent of this bird to be quiet and listen to high-class music. And I was just about to step out of the boat and introduce myself when the bird went into a ballet. You've heard of the Dance of the Mayflies, haven't you? Oh, of course. You know, they soar over the water, dipping and rising. It's sort of a celebration of boy meets girl. Well, this yellow legs had its own version of the mayfly dance. It was making sure that there wouldn't be enough mayflies to start a waltz in a phone booth. All around it, the flies were hatching on the water and struggling to dry their wings and take off. And this hungry bird was gobbling them up as fast as they appeared, on the water or in midair. Really? Yep. Even in my wildest dreams, I never dreamed I could dream up anything like that. You lost me with that last remark. Yeah, I guess it was a little uh, fuzzy. Uh, I think maybe you could use another cup of coffee this morning, honey, after that dream. No, all right. I do want to be wide awake today. You know something, spouse? Mm -hmm. You said you would not do any Girl Scout cooking on this trip. Okay, said I. We'll fly your gas stove and your saucepans up there and build you a modern little kitchen right in the bush. Imagine a rainbow doing any cooking. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You were a rainbow. Mm, with nothing to cook in except a pot filled with gold, just like in real life. Yeah, well, it's awfully early in the morning for biting satire. Now, after all, dear, have I ever deprived you of anything in the 15 years we've been married? Uh, 16. Why can't you remember that? 16? Is it 16? Oh. Hey, I never do, do I? Uh, where, where was I on this dream now? Um, mm, I don't know. It's your dream. Oh. Food. Food, that's it. Oh, what food we had there. Mm. Every day, it was the chef's special on the beach. Mrs. Jackson not only caught her own lake trout, she dragged it ashore and went to town beside the fire. What's that aluminum foil you sling around the kitchen? A coal lamp? Yep, that's the stuff. She put the trout in that and poured the butter to it. It seems that in the dream, she drowned it in butter that she melted in a little homemade aluminum pan. She made a whole kitchen out of aluminum. Handy that way. Mm -hmm. Didn't she use any seasoning? Now wait, I'm not finished. Sure, seasoning. Onion, sliced up and down the trout from head to tail. And then I think, yes, a touch of salt and pepper. And, well, that was it. 
<laughs> you might say she rolled her own. Mm. Didn't she fix any side dishes? Uh, side dishes? Oh, sure, side dishes. Uh, she built a reflector oven right there on the ground with the fire's heat bouncing into a little lean-to. A sort of half tent. And in there, she baked a shortcake and heated up some biscuits she brought from the lodge. Oh, it was the real McCoy, all right. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hi, Pete. Hmm? That's tough luck. Sure, sure. Right to your door. Yeah. Yeah, about 15 minutes. Okay. That was Pete. Mm. Jane ran him out of gas, and he wants a ride to the station. See, I forgot where I left off. Where'd I leave off? Uh, shortcake and biscuits. Oh, yeah. Well, while they were baking, the fish was baking. And when Mrs. Jackson unwrapped that lake trout, the butter and onion smell floated out and around like a colored mist. And the violins began to play softly in the background. And I thought, any second, a waiter in a red velvet vest is going to bring a plateful of that to me. The music soared on on the wings of a gypsy violin. Gypsies in Saskatchewan? <laughs> yeah, dreams can get pretty far out in left field, remember. Well, it all ran together then, everybody eating. Suddenly there was a float plane offshore and a pair of game wardens. I heard somebody say they were looking for a fish hog in a red sweatshirt. Hmm, I wonder if I would have pointed you out if I'd been there. Probably. Anyway, I became invisible, and the warden shoved off without me. And then it occurred to me that I wasn't guilty of anything. Oh, I kept a string of grayling, but only a couple of lake trout. I yelled at the wardens to come back and prove I was a fish hawk, but they kept on going. And after that, everything got a little wild. You know, the way it happens in a dream just mm -hmm. before the end? A lot of people turned up. The woods were full of marching trout hunters. They even came out of airplanes and established a beachhead, piling out of small landing craft. The fishing just turned into a string of impressions, scraps of movement, trout eating spoons and getting the net. Rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, three men in a streamlined tub. And one of them was me, patting a laker on the back and saying, go home, boy. But he wouldn't go. He took the same spoon, fought the same battle all over, and came in close to the boat and said, uh, uh, what did you just tell me to do? You know, that kind of funny business. There were trout all over the place. Some of them just torpedoes of color underwater. Some of them suspended in midair between water and boat. Trout, trout, trout. I remember two boats with four lake trout fighting between them. A rod bent in the shape of a fish hook under the weight and power of a big fish. The rod took a little and the trout took it back. The rod won a yard of line and the trout won a foot. That's the way it went, just full of fish, color, water, splashing. I never had such a lovely dream. And there was one trout, I remember, with the light of sunset on it, very dark and wet, with a kind of a gold wash touching the curved line of its shape. When I'm back from Canada, dragging that trout, take it on your plate, boy, and eat it inside out. There'll be no trout bigger than my little boy is. No trout bigger than my little boy is. And that was just about the wind-up. 
we drifted down the lake for the last time. All of our duffel started down for the shore reluctantly in slow motion. The air was filled with regret. You could feel it. Oh, we said goodbye, of course, quickly. Goodbye, goodbye. Then we taxied away from shore a little piece and moved along towards some open water. We paused for a moment to take one last look at a lovely stretch of shoreline. Sun dappled, trembling in the breeze. And then we gunned the engines and took off. Oh.